star. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure that we, we have uh, um, this opportunity to introduce our technology and uh, solutions. Uh, this is Tony John, the CEO of Instant Neural Biosensors. We believe the light can save life um, through our licensing biomarker, um, Alizer. Uh, just um, we've been just mentioned about that, that we've been selected as from the over 500 uh, biotech company in globally as a, a strategic partner in Merck. So the um, later I will introduce all of the uh, details and why we have these capability to achieve that outstanding um, performance. Yeah. Uh, today we'll take the two section of these our uh, technology and also the product and service. One is the to mention about the um, okay. Um, actually, the uh, life science field that uh, use uh, analysis to focus on the uh, antibody drug or a antibody or antigen selection and also the biomarker ACEs. The other part is we'll mention about the uh, detection part for the um, um, like a clinical study or a clinical test, these kind of the field. So the first we go to the um, uh, first part is the uh, uh, biomarker analysis. Uh, for the biomarker analysis, uh, we um, do um, we just want to mention why we need a full person selected uh, antibody before immunoassays? As we know, we select a lot, um, use a lot of the antibody every day. Um, um, uh, is a it's a very funny sense that, that when we uh, become a scientist or uh, when we uh, teach a student or when you have a, a chance to use the antibody and always just follow what the um, uh, the previous uh, like uh, uh, like uh, your elder uh, like uh, um, brother or sister that they work, work, work in the uh, laboratory so uh, that's a one of way to uh, follow the the our elder uh, um, brother and sister in the laboratory. That's one of the way that we select anybody. And another um, way that we use is to, to pick the uh, most expensive anybody uh, in a catalog or brand and to make sure to ensure that our exper experiment that cannot be failed. But um, as we uh, see, there's a nature science uh, publication that's mentioned, but there's a lot of the um, po um, possibility to, uh, to help us to select the back uh, antibodies. Uh, for example, like a cross reactivity or lots of the uh, uh, match things or wrong application or wrong methods will help us to um, to feel the lot of the uh, things. For example, like if we select the uh, the bad um, antibody or we just um, didn't uh, do the match since that it might always happen is like a waste uh, our time because the, uh, to select an antibody is the easy way. You just buy the uh, most expensive one and the most uh, uh, public or the most uh, a big brand in the world. And you you might think that, that they will uh, uh, reduce our uh, experiment time. But it always happened is uh, we have a bad specificity or bad sensitivity and will affect our result. And also if we want to have a good performance of the loss of the uh, detection, uh, we also need to consider about those of the uh, linear dimension range and uh, also consider about the affinity part um, because the, when we first uh, to do the full per antibody selection, that will reduce a lot of the uh, time and, and and we will save a lot of the time and save of the antibody and also the antigen, also the to reduce those of the um, clinical sample west. Uh, so how we do that? Um, um, a simple idea is just thing you to know. As we do a lot of the work of the um, nucleic acid analysis, right? So the so pass of the quad um, for the NGS or the real time experiment. As we know, the um, we do a lot of like a narrow drop qubit or the biomarker analyzer to do the quality or concentration or size fragment, these kind of the quality control before we run through the NGS, these kind of things. 
or real-time PCR. Um, we know if we have a good uh, quality control, then we will have a good result. Also, the uh, reproducibility will be um, increased. But it's really funny that uh, uh, we do a lot of the uh, um, ELISA or the immunoassay experiment. We didn't select the um, antibody before we run through the um, immunoassays. We just use the catalog subjection. That's an easy way for us to do, but it might have uh, uh, some risk uh, and also um, increase the risk of the waste of time with the sample antibody and also the clinical sample. But if we do just like a send us what we run through the uh, molecule, uh, like a nuclear acid uh, assay, um, if we do the good um, uh, antibody selection and to understand the, their um, affinity over the capability of the limit of the detection or dynamic range will help us to have a good result and cost saving and also the time saving of the following ACEs. Uh, to talk about more about our companies, um, the, we are the first in the world combine the optic fiber nail technology and also the micro fluid as a licensing um, technology. And also our technology is not only for the detection, but also we first to position and to do the good analysis to help us scientists to select the proper good uh, selected antibody, then go to the detection to do the wonderful um, analysis, uh, uh, that uh, email ACES. So we have a global pattern now distributed in UK, uh, US, mainland China, and Taiwan. There's over uh, 40 global patterns, and uh, it's around like a six um, pattern families. Now we have a leading publications. In the past um, couple of years, we have a 25 leading publications so all list on our website. This year, uh, we, will have, uh, we will have five more uh, leading publications. Later, I will introduce some um, publications for you to know. So our technology, I will go deeply to introduce why we have the least capability to achieve this outstanding performance. As we can see, the optical fiber that we use every day, you, you might say why we use the optical fiber every day, because the Wi-Fi actually is comes from the signal is comes from the optical fiber. The optical fiber has a very good feature and benefit, which is no reduction of the uh, signal. So once the light passed um, into the optical fiber, and then our nail particle conjugate with the antibody, and then the air light flows through the antibody, then we can detect the real-time signal. That's a very simple, easy, and instant result. And then combine this optical fiber sensor, we put it into the um, in-chip, auto 4 d chip. Um, this is our, we just got the um, a global patent. So this um, 4 d ch uh, channel has a very outstanding performance. As we know, the, in the lots of the capital equipment, um, there's a very complicated inside the equipment have uh, like uh, um, like a pumping tubing or those kind of the uh, very complicated uh, uh, food day systems. But for us, we use the uh, in chip auto food day chip. There's a no pumping tubing and no west. Only is the uh, a chip. The chip size just like a uh, the chocolate this kind of size is quite small and straightforward. Okay, so if we have this um, um, product and the service, how we run through the experiment, it's quite easy. We took a, a chip, um, the, each of the brand chip already uh, coded with the nail particle. So you only you need to do is to, the step one, to do the antibody immobilization. So once you flew through the antibody into the, uh, our chip, okay, it's just from here to, Use the pipetting food to that. Um, so the antibody that will have a covalent bond to conjugate, immobilize them to the nail particle. As you can see, each of the steps that our machine will real time to have the signal. Um, if you do like a ELISA assay, you never uh, saw their uh, immobilization capability. But through our full per ELISA, you can see the immobilization capability. Once you make sure that everything in mobilization is done, and then you can go to the next step is to flow through the analyte. So the second step is to do the analyte detection. So the second step, when you do the analyze detection, 
we still can see the real time signal and we get no signal and we can go to the next step to do the uh, analysis data. Okay, so the quick uh, experiment for you to know, we took the uh, two uh, chips. One chip could immobilize with the antibody one, the other chip is immobilized with the antibody two, is the different antibody. So we through the and uh, detect the same analyze. Um, if the analyze uh, have a good um, affinity or a good um, detection or good combination that will see their signal, just like uh, this, um, we have a, a signal reduction. If there uh, anybody to that uh, ability or uh, the uh, detection is not good and we don't see any signal. So based on these, we do is use the, and um, we do the affinity analysis. Uh, affinity analysis is, um, we use the um, antibody immobilize that and to use the five different uh, concentration of the analyze one by one to um, flow through into the chip. So once we get the different five different um, signal reduction and we um, just uh, um, the analysis software can directly analyze the result and get those kind of the association and dissociation data. So after these uh, five different points of the concentration load in and we can we can detect and get the result and analyze the data of the capability of these antibody and the, the antigen, how the match, how the perfect match, how their uh, 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 performance between these antibody and antigen. So we can get those results of the limited of the detection and linear dimension range and also the affinity. And if these antibody, we already have the data uh, base, then we can do, do uh, to do analyze uh, the capability. Later, I will give you some example to know. And also the epitome being this kind of uh, uh, data. So we introduce one by one. Okay, I think that lots of the scientists already know about the how and what is the ability, capability or ability. But I would like to give more information for the students. I know some of the students also um, uh, join this uh, webinar. So um, there's a two um, a major word we need to know is association and dissociation. Uh, association, which is the how fast do the, um, do the things, the, the, how fast the antibody and the antigens go to the uh, uh, binding. And how fast uh, is the, um, the dissociation is how fast uh, is the compass fall apart. So based on these, the, um, the association we call is a specificity capability. And also the stability is for the dissociation. So based on these two data, we can um, analyze and get calculate to get how the affinity we can have. So each of the, the room, um, the, the class one, two, and three, which means if the locate on the class one, which means is the uh, best of specificity and uh, the, also the stability is good. For the specificity is the nature their uh, capability, but for the stability is all related to the buffer system, uh, buffer environment. That's the uh, um, major uh, um, information I would like to you to know. So use uh, one of the example for um, uh, as an example for you to know, we select the two antibody um, and compare with the same antibodies from the IMD system. First is antibody one and the second is antibody two. And we use the same antibodies in the IMD system, the TNF alpha. You might say, oh, okay, it's an unfair game to the app can because the, um, this actually is an ELISA kit. So of course the IMD system may, might have a perfect match Okay, but let's go uh, down to the analysis and see what happened uh, will be. So we just put a user two um, chip and loading immobile with the antibody one and also the chip two loading with the antibody two and um, independent uh, individually we load with the uh, and analyze to each of the chips. Then we can analyze of the um, um, K on and K of those kind of a specificity and uh, um, 
stability result. And also we um, see the uh, LOD, liberty of the detection. We can see the, actually it's not that um, bit different. And also they have a good linear, uh, linear diameter range. But I want to highlight one of the things, the original IMD system, their kit, their um, the linear diameter range is two orders. So if they uh, send anybody apply on our four per um, technology, the uh, linear time range is increased. And also there, the limiting of the detection is also down to the ultra sensitivity, this kind of label. So we use these um, uh, data to put in, in our 3D analysis. As you can see, there's a very interesting part. Uh, and this system should be the perfect of the match, okay, because they're upper system and also their specificity already uh, become a uh, ELISA kit. But the truth is not. The app can they have a, um, um, the perfect match of the, in the specificity and also the spe uh, uh, stability. And, and the AMD system that um, their ELISA um, kit, their um, specificity is good, but the stability uh, their buffer environment, they need to adjust a little bit. So there's another information just then you to know. If we find these kind of a 3D analysis, um, there will be um, help on this system have a, another solution is to adjust their buffer system to help them to move to the uh, class one. That's a one of the um, idea for scientists to know. But if we um, see the APCAN and on this system, but we, we also have a TNF alpha database. So we collect those affinity database from the open source and also from our uh, strategic partner and also from our existing database. And we find a very interesting part is that can uh, anybody um, perfect match? Um, oh, yes or no? Uh, it's all based on all the database is a general um, average high. So we will know this kind of a match is a good match. But let me uh, introduce another uh, information to, to have a comparison. Now we use an example two is a, um, a mouse IgG. Okay, there's a two brand. I don't mention about these two company, but um, uh, as we can see, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, we use the, the, the uh, Merck antigen, okay, to compare with the L brand and M brand, these kind of the antibody. So, uh, as we know, there's a uh, many IgGs um, anybody. So we we just always follow those kind of a catalog and we select the best and select the uh, uh, good quality and uh, uh, also maybe the higher expensive one. But when we do the analysis and we put it in the three D four per analysis uh, map, it's a very interesting things we can see the M brand and also the L brand, which is um, they they don't have a very good um, Affinity. So um, we also have a database to do the average uh, analysis. So we find out the M brand and L brand is truly bad because the average is low. So we will never use these two uh, match. Okay, so I want to highlight one of the things. Uh, it's not the, um, um, the problem of the antibody because the, the issue is of the match and also the how you use the, how you select those kind of the uh, antibody. So the issue is how you do the match and to do the affinity and to do, uh, before you do the downstream analysis. That's the um, major issue. So another example for you to know, we work with the, uh, one of the Taiwan company. This company is uh, running through that uh, COVID-19 uh, like a lateral flow strip. So before that, use the. Uh, how many? Um, yeah. Um, sorry about. I heard a, a little bit about the background noises. Yeah. If you can mute the uh, uh, noise, uh, that would be uh, very helpful for us. Uh, okay. We work with the uh, uh, least um, uh, uh, company, so they use this antibody and um, apply on the. Um, so um, as we know, the, uh, all of the uh, lateral flow, they use the um, sandwich antibody. So there's all, always need to select not only one match, but also need to have a two different epitome uh, uh, binding. So we use the epitome binding. It's quite straightforward. We use our um, 
chip and flew through the uh, first we immobilized our antibody one and also the um, to uh, we immobilized the antigen and flew through the antibody one and also flew through a different antibody to select which one is the best of the best. So I will not go to the detail of uh, each the graphs. The can, uh, we can select through the um, uh, the uh, epitome binning to, to also to select the uh, uh, one or two or three different kinds of the epitome binding on the same antigen. That's what we are doing now. So there's a couple samples that uh, we can run through. For example, like antibody antigen or aptama or peptide, these kind of the uh, antigen or antibody can do the uh, antibody selection or the um, uh, uh, epitome binning, these kind of a service or, or detection. So uh, we now we have a global um, um, partner, surgical partner like uh, Apcan, Israel Prospect is uh, um, antibody uh, antigen company and also the Merck Sigma and also the uh, US company BioLagin and the GeneTax. These kind of company, we also provide the their ELISA and provide a service. Later, Emily will introduce uh, more about our uh, ELISA screen, this part. And also through and based on our FOPR service, we have our FOPR selective antibody. Actually, actually we have uh, over 100 antibody already selected by our FOPR. So it's a lot to lot quality control and also with the uh, unique peptide and antigen design. So it's quite unique to help the scientists to um, um, already have a selected, um, you don't need to um, use our uh, uh, selected again, you just uh, directly uh, um, um, buy from our uh, catalog and then you can get a, a, a high quality um, a control of the uh, FOPR antibody. So these are two uh, antibody example for you to know how we select. Uh, actually, we, um, as we know, the brand A, brand B, actually the, the big big brand in the uh, antibody company, and, uh, and uh, our uh, in AB uh, four per selected antibody, we use the same antigen to do the um, 3D analysis and to find the best of the uh, antibody to provide. So the customer just um, can select the. Uh, these antibody directly, you, you don't need to apply the full surface. But you, if you, um, the antibody is not on our list, I will highly the, uh, suggest you do the uh, full perspective um, service or uh, ASA before you do the uh, downstream email ASA. So we have a couple examples for you to know, but uh, I will not go through hundreds of the antibody one by one. Okay, so as we know, the first we, um, to do the life science, do the analysis to understand the limiting of the detection and also the linear dimension and also understand all of the uh, affinity precision and to do and to select the best of the match and best of the antibody. And then we have the good precision and to go to the detection, to do the uh, diagnostic part, to do the clinical test. Let me introduce some of the example of how we run through those biomarker detection part. First, analysis. And second, we do the uh, uh, biomarker detection. As we know, the, for the uh, regular um, of the ASA, we do the manual ELISA or to do the automatic platform or use uh, the other big machine to run through the uh, uh, ELISA. It always took a lot of steps. I think if I ask you, who would like to do the ELISA ASA? Nobody will raise your hand because uh, it's too, too, too um, worth of time. But uh, might be some teacher uh, will mention about that. Oh, it's a training program for the student. Yes, but I would like to say the training program indeed, we need to took a lot of steps. But if we have a more time, we can save up more time to have a quick result. And then we will help them have to have a more um, high production and, and high value of the um, those kind of a publication and those kind of a, uh, application to go to the commercialization. So our um, benefit is to help the scientists to shorten the um, uh, experiment of the procedure and also shorten the time and save the uh, uh, human um, 
mistake and loss of the um, um, highly performance to help the scientists have a good result. And actually for the detection is, we have a two of them. Uh, actually we have the direct assay, uh, for like assay and competition assay for these kind of the uh, things. Uh, first, uh, the, for the direct uh, direct assay uh, to uh, have the most of the, uh, you don't need to use a sandwich. You just use the uh, one antibody to do the um, analysis um, uh, directly. And also, we have the uh, for like assay, which is the two antibody and detect with the one analysis and with the uh, ultra sensitivity performance. And also these kind of the um, uh, different methods, we already have a, a different publication. For example, like these um, uh, publications that uh, have a high impact factor, it's over 10 uh, impact factor. And also uh, we can use the different the right assay or small molecule to do the competition assay. These are uh, all publication, are all, all these on our website. Uh, I use a couple examples for you to know. Um, uh, first is the direct assay. How is the direct assay works? It's quite easy. Um, the proper uh, sensor, we immobilize the antibody. So it's quite easy that uh, uh, we just uh, immobilize the, the, the antibody and detect with the target. That's what we are running through. So we use the um, uh, a clinical sample is the needs flu. The needs flu, the, we detect the one of the um, uh, tumor necrosis factor, TNF alpha, to detect the inside the needs flu, how the concentration is. So the data we compare with the ELISA, as you can say, see the ELISA data has a, a narrow uh, linear range and also their uh, sensitivity is not very uh, uh, good. But our FOPA technology provides wild and ranging also with a uh, good uh, sensitivity. That's a one of the example. The other example is also use a NIST rule to detect that MMP3, these kind of biomarkers. And you, as you can see, the data is we have a good uh, performance of the linear range and also with a good uh, sensitivity. Uh, yeah. The other um, example is for the fluorescent ASA with the ultra sensitivity performance. Uh, this uh, ultra sensitivity performance that we uh, um, uh, use the two different antibody to detect. Um, for the full per analysis and full per detection, use uh, two antibodies, not like the traditional ELISA, only can like uh, with uh, absorbance, forensics, or luminescence, these kind of the uh, result. Um, we use a full per this technology can, can help us use the two antibody can down to the fentanyl ground with a high specificity, high sensitivity, and also keep the wild range this performance. So one of the examples is the uh, PCT uh, uh, detected in the serum. And we can see that the uh, data can down to the fentanyl uh, molar least kind of a high ultra sensitivity. Yeah. So, so these kind of the FOPER analysis and FOPER detection, and also our FOPER selecting antibody, how to combine as a project. So uh, for the most of the, what we work with the uh, scientists, uh, just for you to know, our um, service and, and machine already sold to the Harper Medical School and also the Brigham Women Hospital in Boston. So what they are doing is, they already have their um, ELISA data or they would like to use their candidate to apply on our FOPER uh, technology. So once they, they do is to do the analysis to make sure their antibody and NDG have a perfect match. And then once these are uh, set, uh, uh, selected, and then we will go to the detection part. For the detection part, we will help the scientists to develop the, their, their AC develop. And also uh, based on the AC develop, they will, we will run through loads of the AC detection and also the clinical test. And the, once these are done, and the first, for the scientists, we will have a, a, a very high impact publication. That's the first. And secondly, if we, um, uh, as we know, we work with a, a lot of the different um, big company. So um, there's a, another opportunities. We can do the commercialization as a kit or go to the our licensing to the um, different uh, biotech company. So the couple ways just let you to know, it's not only for the research part, 
our photo publication. But also we have a commercialization and also outlets and these kind of a, a, a scenario to go to the um, next step. So to summarize all the product and service, we have the machine and also we have a POCT uh, in the coming um, year. And also the chip and also the um, uh, ability analysis service and proper selective antibody. Uh, this are a couple of information just then you to know. Um, we, um, instant nail biosensors, we based on the uh, proper technology. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tony. Uh, I will now invite Ms. Emily Young to give her presentation on the workflow of uh, FOPPR services. Hello, everyone. This is Emily. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, you can. Yeah, okay, thank you. So for my part, um, I would like to introduce uh, how to join this uh, one-stop screening and analysis service on the Fulper Cloud Lab. So first, I would like to recap again. Ambi already uh, has teamed up with Appam, Bolligen, and Gentex, uh, those, I, I would say, famous brands, and also Prospect. And uh, we are provide an all-in-one store for your immunoassays need. So that means you could directly um, buy the outcome, gene tags, um, biologin, or even prospect the protein antibodies or the ELISA kits to through NGAs and even the IMB antibodies and to do the um, ELISA screening and FOPER analysis. And for those famous brands, uh, how to find out their uh, antibodies or ELISA information, please go their official website directly and to select what you need. So later I will use AppCam as, a, as an example to you. And here I would like to put more time for uh, IMB antibodies. I would like to introduce um, how to find out uh, the antibodies on our website. So the same, please go to IMB's official website, just click and that will be go to our website. Uh, for the first page, you can see here have an antibody picture. So this is the antibody information. It's quite easy to find out. So click that, you are going to the FOPER analysis view and uh, the product take here, and you can find out the primary antibodies. Click, click that, and they have several different kinds of uh, applications. For example, for the oncology, apoptosis, or even the cell cycle, cell signal. And uh, uh, for example, we take the neuroscience as an example. Uh, click if you want to find out the neuroscience and you go to the neuroscience, neuroscience session and you can find out those um, antibodies already selected through FOPER platform. So you could choose the target you want. For example, if you like the GFAP, you could just uh, click that and you get the information here. And if you want this antibody, please just remember the CAN number here, IN1544. This is the CAN number. And uh, pass the information to NGS and make the have the quotation and make an order. So um, this is how to find out the IMB antibody. And what is the benefit? I mean, what is the advantage for IMB antibody? We are offering the antibodies around 150 to 200 around. And uh, those anybody already selected and qualified by our full per platform. And what does that mean? That means we are already uh, find the balance between high affinity and also high specificity. So um, the, you could directly make an order for the uh, IMB antibodies through NGS. Okay, so after 
uh, you pick up the materials and you are thinking to join the service. So here are three different options. One is make an order for the antibodies directly only. And the second one is do screening. And the third one is um, analysis. Of course, you can do three of them or two of them. Yeah. And I would like to introduce more clearly how to join that and the steps. The steps one is choose the manufacturer. As I mentioned before, I would pick AppCam as the example, um, just uh, directly to go to AppCam, their website, okay? And when you go to their website, you can type here their search bar. For example, if I type TNF Alpha, okay, so um, before you click the search, you could find out uh, the information here, down here directly. If you only need the antibody, you already find out there have 45 results for TNF alpha antibody. If you want the ELISA kit or matched uh, antibody pair kit, you already have 45 results here. So uh, if we want the ELISA kit, you just click there and uh, go into the results, the 41 results, and pick one, for example, the first one is you want, and just remember the catalog number and pass the information to NGS. Then you will get the quotation. Okay, so this is the, um, find out the manufacturer, find out the materials, the first step. And the second one, choose the service you want. How, uh, what is the service workflow? Where we could find it and how to, how to do that, how to select that. So directly to go to Instant Nano Biosensors website, okay? So here is Instant Nano Biosensors website. And here has the product and full per service. After you click that, uh, you will see here. They have three different sections. The first one is the workflow. And the second one is related to the screening. And the third one is related to the analysis. So you can pick the one you want to take a look and more information inside. After you choose, uh, for example, if you choose the um, screening, it has a screening, what kind of uh, document you have to uh, fill in. So the same, as I mentioned, um, sorry. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, all the information is in the website. So when you, uh, let, me, let me go back again. So for here, so when you are here, if you are choosing the screening, click in and you will find out uh, the information here. And there has a form here, English format or Chinese format. And the format is just like I shared a uh, few minutes ago here. Uh, just fill in the information and uh, pass the information to NGS and uh, we will uh, book a time to have a meeting with you directly and know more about what you need for this service. And also you will get the quotation. And the third steps is you will get the re result. And uh, for the um, ELISA screening result, we will offer you the ELISA screening uh, data. Okay, and uh, I would like to share the report example for the analysis, FOPER analysis. So you can see the FOPER analysis report here. Um, just as Tony said before, you will get the information as uh, you will have the uh, immobilization situation. This is important because for ELISA, you couldn't see that immediately or even you, you couldn't have the data about immobilization, or you, you only get the result of uh, positive or negative something. So this is the first one, immobilization signal. And the second one is the LOD. And uh, uh, of course we are offering the affinity data, KA, KD, and KD capital, and also the affinity, um, affinity database position. 
Okay, so this is the, an example of the analysis report. And of course, one more thing is uh, because the concentration is uh, directly related, have a uh, high related to the analysis report. So we, uh, we will test the concentration through the Soma Fisher in Richard G. Qubit assays. Okay, so it's quite easy. And then you are have the data, could do the other thing. For example, do maybe publications or even for the next steps or any, any other possibilities. Okay, so let's start the one-stop screening and analysis surveys with IMB and NGS. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Emily. So uh, I will now open the floor for Q&A. So is there any questions? Uh, you can actually drop your question at the chat box or you can actually turn on your mic and ask uh, Mr. Tony or Miss Emily personally. Hello, testing. Can you uh, listen to me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello. Okay. Hello and good morning. My name is Dr. Baia from uh, IUM, UIE Kuantan. Okay, I'm asking about the sample type uh, that we can use for this test. Sorry if I miss along the line. Uh, is it actually, um, can we use... Uh, uh, I mean, biological in terms of a biological sample. Is it blood or um, can you use urine? If you are using urine sample to find a certain type of protein or biomarkers, do we need to process or prepare the urine uh, with other uh, reagent before we can use it directly to the instrument? Okay, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, uh, let me um, explain. Uh, we have a two part. One is the uh, analysis, and the other is for the detection. So the analysis part, uh, you um, definitely need to use the pure, um, for example, like an antibody antigen or the peptide, those kind of pure. Otherwise, you cannot see the um, their truly affinity or binding this kind of information. But for the detection, is the after. Um, we do the analysis and the detection, of course, when we, um, just like uh, ELISA, when we have the ASA developed, then uh, you can run through, for example, like a serum, a plasma, um, urine, or the, um, like, a, like a nice food, this kind of a body food that um, after the ASA develop, you can um, use that. For our um, publications, we already use like a serum, plasma, means through um, urea, and also I'll do the virus detection, we'll do the um, um, different kind of like a, 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 like a water tank uh, to do the like NMV, this kind of, uh, or like some agriculture, these kind of the uh, virus detection. We do a lot of different uh, uh, sample type, but the, for the uh, a human being, uh, the body through that um, after the AC develop, then you can use that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So is there any other questions on the floor? Uh, you can actually drop your questions in the chat box or you can actually turn on your mic and ask uh, Mr. Tony and Ms. Emily. Yeah, uh, before you drop your um, a message, I just want to share uh, some very interesting part when we visit like Harvard. Um, um, so that you might see the, um, uh, when I be, uh, actually they, they bought our machine and when, when we first uh, demo, okay. So the, I've been asked their postdoctor. I said uh, um, in the Harvard that uh, while you um, select your antibody, I said that postdoc actually um, they, they, uh, stay uh, in Harvard quite a while. And then said, uh, um, because the, um, we are in Harvard, so we uh, definitely need to buy the, the most expensive one, like uh, AppCan, <laughs> this kind of the, the, the brand, okay? So without any um, excuse, so the, just select the, 
the, the, the most expensive one. But um, after we use their um, antibody that, and we find a very interesting part. Um, they use the two different AppCam and also they uh, compare with the one ELISA kit. Those are the most expensive AppCam antibody. Uh, they cannot um, get the good uh, affinity data. So um, when they uh, test that, and then the, the first question is, hey, is your machine or your analysis wrong? Okay, so the, because they use the best of the two antibody, okay? So, so we, we, we just uh, uh, ask them to open another new um, uh, ELISA kit, okay? So uh, I just uh, uh, suggest them, um, why, why don't we use the, that ELISA kit to do uh, around the same um, experiment and with the same ally? After they run through the, uh, ELISA uh, kit, then they, they finally find the uh, best of a match signal. So it's not always to find the most expensive thing can they get a good match of the result, just a, a kind of story to share with you all. Thanks. Tony, I think we have some question there. I saw in the chat box. Um, a Wang mentioned about uh, how do we send our samples to you for analysis? This is the first one. And uh, for this, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Tony, can you hear me? No, I mean, you can say that. <laughs> no, 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 you can answer. You can yeah, I'm a little, mention. little lag. Yeah, so please. Yeah, that's for the first one uh, that is quite easier. Um, sorry about that. My my Wi-Fi is a little lag, but um, for the uh, analysis part, we have a standard procedure. I, you just follow the the antibody and antigen, how the value of volume and how the concentration. Uh, we we will provide the reference for you. You just send it to us, just like a send the antibody uh, like. Uh, so the, it's quite uh, straightforward and quite easy. And we will um, Tony, I think we cannot hear you very clearly, but I could make some, um, some answer here. How you sent the sample to us, uh, all the analysis are, are doing in Taiwan so far. So um, please contact NGAs and uh, they could support you what uh, the items you have to prepare. For example, for how, what the concentration for the antibody or the antigen you need for analysis or how many you need to offer for analysis. So um, we have the order form for analysis and then after the meeting, uh, I think NGS could pass the order form to you and you can take a look and you can understand, uh, you can know more about uh, how to do that. Yeah. And uh, so um, is that clear for the answer for, for Wong? And for the second one, um, I think we lost Tony, <laughs> but but maybe later uh, he will come up come up again. And uh, for the second one, second question is um, is Elisa and Fulper has the same function? And as I see, some comparison has been made there. Um, I would say they are have the similar function there, but um, Elisa only offer the information about the concentration or uh, some some data for um, for for concent yes for concentration for example for LOV or LDR but for FOPER, they could offer not only that uh, furthermore uh, even they offer the similar data for example they offer the LOD or LDR to as 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 Elisa. 
but um, they could offer more sensitivity, more sensitive result. This is the FOPR advantage. And another thing is FOPR could offer uh, can it, uh, affinity data. That is ELISA couldn't offer. Okay, so they have the similar way, but uh, not, not totally the same. So that's why our service is step by step. Um, ELISA, it, because some need is um, high throughput screening, but after screen screening, you need more, more um, sensitive data or more evidence to make sure something, right? Make sure your, your theory. So after ELISA screening, and then you could do the analysis. This is the way, this is one way. And another way is um, before you do the ELISA, you want your uh, screening, the antibody is already selected. You could do the analysis first and then do ELISA screening. This is the, uh, the way so far. Okay. Uh, Emily, there is actually yeah. another question in the chat box regarding yeah. the sample prep for uh, uh, for the FOPA technology. Perhaps you can actually answer that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, of course. Any liquid liquid format samples could be accepted. For example, uh, I saw here uh, cancer cancer cells. Actually, we did this this the uh, can uh, the cell before it. And uh, plant cell, you, you mean um, protoplast, right? So we have the experiment for that. Is That is no problem. But any liquid format sample could accept for us, for the FOPR system. Okay. And another, another uh, question is about how many days does it take to get the result? Yeah, I saw that. Um, for, for ELISA screening, I would say the working day for screening is five to five, five working days. Actually, because the device uh, we use for ELISA screening is auto device. So that is fine for us, but because we have the schedule for each project. So for the screening, for, for, uh, for the screening that around take maybe five days to get the result. But for the analysis, because uh, they need to negotiate and uh, no more details. So that will be around 10 days. So that will be more, around two weeks. And uh, ELISA is one week. Okay. So I think we have Tony back. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Sorry about it. No problem. So next question is for you. <laughs> what is the advantage of uh, FOPR and over standard SPR? So compare compare FOPR and SPR, the advantage okay. for FOPR. Yeah, just because uh, um, um, uh, uh, like uh, um, SPR, there's a couple of companies called the uh, GE vehicle. And uh, also the, there's a, another company supporting 40, 40 the buyer. Um, to be honest, that uh, yeah, uh, for the screening part, um, the, if you want to do a large uh, like uh, um, antibody drug screening, I will highly recommend you, you use the uh, vehicle. But if you the um, sample is not uh, is less than five, and then you want to have a very quick uh, get those kind of affinity data, uh, I would definitely uh, suggest you use because the uh, for the vehicle part that uh, only provide ability data. But for us, we are not only provide the, um, we can see the, the environment. We can see my um, video. I just want you to know the, how uh, a vehicle works uh, with the SPR. So that normally SPR just like this, right? 
they are afraid of biting. They use a high um, salt, high um, buffer system to try to dissociate the, those kind of the, the, the part, right? But for us, our footprint technology use the uh, in-chip uh, auto uh, fluid is. What we do is to just like uh, gently to understand their binding capability. And uh, the association is to know their naturally association. We don't use any high salt. We only, only use like a PBS. Okay, so it's a naturally to um, to to understand the the, the uh, truly uh, association and dissociation apart. That that's what a uh, uh, different uh, what, uh, the inside the different. Yeah, just thank you to know. And the other way is the beer code that cannot the are uh, used for the detection. For their detection is too complicated. Um, to do the detection part. They, they can do the high, large screening numbers of the allies, but for the detection, they, they don't have a capability to do that. That's the kind of a three major difference for you to know, thanks. Okay, so we have another question is, can FOPER analyze sample from plants for antibody? Okay, so this is the first one. And the second one is, do we need to provide the antibody or polyclonal or mono? Can we use another brand instead of uh, AppCam? So this question, I think I could directly answer. Of course, yes, because we are in platform. Uh, just any antibody or any antigen, we could directly conjugate with our knowledgeable particle. So it's no problem from other brands. But why we team up with AppCam and GeneTech and Biologin and even Prospect or our own antibody is have some reasons. <laughs> so uh, this is the first thing. And the second thing is if you are choosing those brands, we already team up, you could directly connect with NGAs with one stop, one, I mean, one stop service, order and service and report directly. You don't need to uh, separate leave from different company. So this is the advantage for uh, this uh, one shop service. Okay, so for the first question, Tony, can the FOPER analyze sample from plants? Yeah, I can share one of the, um, the other uh, scientists that they use their data, just to, to know a very quick uh, data to share. Uh, the plan, uh, anybody that we, we've been in culture, kind of the uh, detection, just then you to know the, um, uh, okay. Now, Tony, I think you, uh, can you click, uh, close your vi uh, video, I mean camera? You have these, for the, anybody that those kind of the, like a ultra lace kind of virus. Yeah, that's that's very early publication, but in the um, become the um, uh, the our auto fruity chip that we can use that. So the idea is quite easy that use a four per sensor and antibody then we can detect different varietal type of the samples. That's just the information to let you to know. Yeah. Okay. So. Tony, you're still unstable, I think. So can you just uh, turn off your, your video or camera? And then we have uh, one more question here. How many anybody putting could we screen using your high throughput system? So I think here is two is uh, ELISA screening or uh, full per analysis. So Tony, this question for you. Okay. Yeah, um, I will recommend that uh, one of the, uh, um, for example, um, I just mentioned about um, a, a company, uh, I think I can share the, their, how they are run through their uh, samples and just then to know how we uh, works and apply to those kinds of uh, uh, companies. Um, uh, Epitone, let me show you. I can show you this company. Okay, this company that uh, used the uh, um, um, antibody drug. Actually, there there is the antibody drug company. So they have the uh, SVFC. I, I I think you can recognize what I mean. SVFC has been 
um, can recognize with uh, and generate by different uh, epitome. Okay, so let's use the ELISA and also the beer code to do the screening, high throughput screening, and to narrow down, to narrow down um, to less than maybe like a, um, 10 or five um, uh, uh, candidates and to apply our system to do the um, deeply analysis. That's what I highly recommend. So if you have a, like a hundred or made a, a lot of, of that, so I would have first uh, recommend that you use a ELISA or use a beer code or 45 to do the screen. And to, um, once you screen or nail down less than 10, then use our candidate uh, screening for per surface. That's what I uh, recommend for your uh, uh, for you to know. Thanks. Yeah, okay, we have one more. <laughs> for analyzing protein protein that action, do we need to include a specific take in our recombinant uh, protein for conjugating it to our um, nanoparticle? The answer for one, this is um, not necessary, okay? <laughs> we could, uh, because the theory is uh, directly covalent bond to conjugate the antibody or even the antigen to our nautical particle. So you don't need the specific tag, except, except your experiment needs that, right? Okay, Tony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, the conjugation between the antibody immobile, how to immobilize these nautical particles. There's a couple of ways. I know uh, someone used a tag like uh, uh, protein A, protein G, or other his take things. That's a one up way. But the, normally we use another way is uh, um, uh, we have a recipe for you to have the uh, covalent bonding on the FC region with our nautical particle. So it's a covalent bond. So it's very tightly, uh, highly tightly and, and the, uh, the binding ability is, is the highest one, yeah. So that's what we do. So it's quite easy if you have a machine, okay, you can do it by your own. You don't need to send it send back to, to Taiwan or, or to anywhere. So that's another way that um, first you run through a service, you feel good, and then you can make a, a budget for purchase the instrument. And you can do by your own and to do these kind of experiments. In, uh, for the analysis, also the detection in your lab. Yeah. 